Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Nate and today I'll be taking you through the ICT lesson review week 1 and week 2. Now the reason for this lesson is to take you through what your teacher has taught you in ICT from week 1 to week 2. To help you remember all the things your teacher has taught you and it's also supposed to help you to do your homework well. Now I know that some of us are happy and excited about this particular video and trust me, you are going to find it really fun and interesting and um, we are going to be doing this video every week. So every week, you stay tuned to our YouTube channel to see our lesson review week in week out but before we go on in this lesson i'd like you to quickly scroll down follow us on youtube activate the bell icon and then like this video okay have you done that now let's move to our lesson like um, i told you that this lesson is basically a review of what we've been doing in our ICT classes and this particular class is for those of us that are in grade 3 and we will be looking at the history of computer. The lessons will be taken from our ICT textbook pages 5 to 8. Okay, so what are the learning objectives? At the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify different computers you should be able to explain the history of computer in the correct sequence. You should be able to mention the classes of computer and you should be able to describe the microcomputers and how they help our daily activities. Okay, so let's talk about the history of computer. How did computer came to be? In the olden days, or when God started creating the world, God created so many things. God created man, God created animals, God created the birds, God created water, God created the wind, God created so many things. But there are some things that God did not create because God wants human beings to also create their own things so god left the world for human beings to create every other thing but god gave human beings the brain to create so many things now there was a time that people needed to do calculation but there were no devices for calculations. People needed to do counting. There was no device for counting. For instance, if I am selling, um, if I'm selling peanuts, you come to buy peanut from me. Another person comes to buy peanut. Another person comes to buy peanut. Another person comes to buy peanut. If I don't have a calculator, I can't keep a good account of how many people are buying how many how much i'm making from the peanuts that people are buying from me so because there was no machine or there was no device or computer at that period people were using their fingers and stones to count they were just okay mr john came to buy peanuts mr sam mr dan mr nate mr john and they started using their fingers they are told they are fit to do calculation. All of this could not really do effective calculations. Then people started using sticks. You can see the picture of sticks here. People started using sticks and stones to count. All of these devices did not really help. Then some people invented the abacus. You can see the picture of the abacus. And you can see the picture of the little child using the abacus to count. Now, because some people did not really like to use stones and sticks because this would litter the house. And then using fingers and stone, if you are going to count 3,000, how long are you going to go with your fingers and 
um, your toes. But Abacus could do a better job than the, the first counting methods. Abacus was invented because you can now organize all your beads in just one box and then do your counting just like this. And if you go to the nursery classes or the, the, the play group, you will see that they have Abacus in their classes because this is still helping them to do calculation at their level. Now, because technology is advancing each and every day, there are usually new technology every day. It has been from the olden days. So after finger stones and sticks, abacus was invented. Then Napier bones was also invented by a man called John Napier in 1617. Now people started using Napier bones to do calculation, but the problem with Napier bone is that it was done in Arabic mathematics. So only those who understood Arabic mathematics could use abacus. So abacus could not really solve a lot of problems when it comes to calculation. Then, like I told you, technology advanced each and every day. People got tired of using Napier bones because it wasn't doing so well. Then, a French mathematician who is a physics, when we say a mathematician or a physics, we physicist, we mean someone who is a, who is an expert or an expert in mathematics or an expert in physics, which means that the person had studied mathematics or physics or mathematics and physics in the university. Now this man's name is Blaise Pascal and he is a French man, meaning he's from France. Blaise Pascal built the first mathematical of uh, first mechanical calculating machine called the Pascal's wheel. Now Blaise Pascal built the Pascal's wheel. Now let me tell you a brief story about Blaise Pascal. Blaise Pascal's father is a tax collector actually for France or for the French government. Now Blaise Pascal's father, a tax collector, will go to different companies, different individuals, collect tax, tax for the government. But at the end of the day, he won't be able to calculate properly. That was one of the reasons why his son, Blaise Pascal, built the Pascal's will. And the Pascal's will helped them to do addition and subtraction of numbers. Do you know the amazing thing about Blaise Pascal's will? In today's cars, we have a device called odometers or speedometer. Now, these devices were built as a result of the science of Blaise Pascal's Pascal's will. What I mean is, it was from the idea of Blaise Pascal's will that the odometers in cars are built today. So, Blaise Pascal's name cannot be forgotten in the world of technology. Now there's another interesting man that I want to talk about. This man did a lot in the world of computer. Just like I told you every time, there are different devices, there are upgrades each and every time because as the human race or as human beings or as people grow, they think of better devices that can make life better. That is the reasons why there was another device after the Pascal's wheel and this device is called analytical engine. The name of the um, the name of the person or the scientist that built analytical engine is Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage. Everybody say Charles Babbage. Okay, now Charles Babbage is the father of computer. 
Why is Charles Babbage the father of computer? We called Charles Babbage the father of computer because he helped in building most of the accessories that we use in our modern day computer. He came up with the idea of some of the devices that we use in our modern day computer and he built the first device that worked that worked like some of the computers that we use in today's world charles babbage invented analytical engine charles babbage invented what analytical engine now analytic let's let me quickly read up what we have about charles babbage in the year 1837 a scientist from England known to be Charles Babbage invented the analytical engine which could keep our data safely. We call him the father of all computers because he contributed greatly to the development of today's computer. Now look at the picture of Charles Babbage. Look at the picture of the analytical engine that he built. Now, I'm sure some of you will be asking me, is this a computer? Can it really work? And, well, this is the machine. I have not used it before. I'm just telling you what is in the history. However, I can tell you the ones that I know, the ones that we have that I have used before, and the one that we can see. Now, let me really talk about the computer system. Now, all of these devices that you can see, Charles Babbage, Blaise Pascal, Napier, Bon App. Abacus, those are the inventions that led to the modern day computer system. Now there were so there, there were so many other devices, or there are so many other devices that were built. But this I was but in a lesson, I was um I decided to skip some of them because of time. However, you can check Google for more information. Okay, however we might not go into all of those details because these are the basic information that we need to you know know at this level do you understand okay now the computer system is capable of doing anything depending on the kind of data imputed into it computer can do so many things computer can store data computer can be used to play game computer can be used to type Computer can be used to draw, computer can be used to treat sick patients, computer can be used for so many things. But there are different classes of computer. Because a thermometer is actually a computer. A cell phone is also a computer. A laptop is also a computer. A desktop is a computer. An iPad is a computer. Um, the weight machine is a computer. The fuel pumping machine is a computer. The ATM machine is a computer. But how do we classify all of these computers? I need to tell you that we have four classes of computer. We have the microcomputer, we have the mini computer, we have the mainframe computer, and we have the supercomputer. Can you say this after me? Microcomputer, mini computer, mainframe computer and supercomputer yes those are the classes of computer now the out of all of these classes of computer the one that we use majorly or the one we see around us is are the microcomputers microcomputers are the most common kind of computers used till date the term microcomputer was introduced with the advent with the advent of systems based on single chip processor. Now these are the examples of the microcomputer. You can see this is a desktop computer. This is a desktop computer. We call it a desktop computer because we usually place this computer on the desk. This also is another type of computer, a tower computer. We call it tower computer because it stands on its own. It is different from this because this is lying on the table, the monitor is on it. This other one is standing on its own, the monitor is standing on its own. Now this is the picture of a laptop. This is the picture of an iPad computer. This is a picture of an Inca computer. All of these are computers. I know some people will call this one laptop and they will call this one computer and they will call this one iPad and they will call this one I don't know what you want to call this one 
but all of them are called computer system but they have their individual name this is the desktop computer this is the tower computer this is the laptop computer this is the ipad computer and this is the in car computer i think that brings us to the end of this lesson however we have some exercises here that you are supposed to do now what is the first question it says you should mention two other counting devices invented between 1620 and 1671 let's quickly look at it 1620 and 1671 this is 1617 so napier ball was invented pascal's will was also invented now let's go to the next question who invented napier bones we told you that already i told you that john napier invented napier bones john napier invented napier bones john napier invented napier bones now the mathematician who invented pascal's will is from which country his name is bliss pascal and he's from france okay week two mention two examples of microcomputer that can be carried from one place to another without stress because they are small a laptop is a microcomputer that you can move from one place to another an ipad is a microcomputer that you can move from one place to another a cell phone is a computer that you can move from one place to another mention three places where microcomputers can be found found you can find microcomputers in school you can find microcomputers in the bank you can find microcomputer in the church you can find microcomputer in the car you can find microcomputer so many places at the hospital and all so basically these are the things that we have done in our week one and week two ict lesson i hope this video has helped you in so many ways don't forget to follow us on youtube and like this video see you next week bye